स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडेज लेक्चर इन लास्ट लेक्चर we discussed about the space quantization of angular momentum operator we saw that for a given value of l we had 2l plus 1 number of angular momentum eigen functions we also discussed how different particles would have different angular momentum and then correspondingly it will have different angular momentum eigen functions we then wanted to obtain the functional forms of these angular momentum eigen functions and this is where we felt the need of converting our coordinate system from cartesian coordinate system to spherical coordinate system and we discussed that instead of define when we have a point in the cartesian space x y z we can redefine that point in a different coordinate system r theta phi where r is the distance from uh, distance of that point from the origin and theta is the r vector th theta is the angle that r vector makes with the z axis and when you make a projection of that point onto xy plane and that particular vector makes an angle of phi with respect to x axis using these three coordinate uh, coordinates r theta and phi we can define the space of this point in the spherical system, spherical coordinate we call this coordinate system spherical coordinate because for a given value of r if we uh, plot the graphical representation of of this uh, this system this coordinate system we would actually get this uh, graph of a sphere the possible values of r theta and phi are shown here r can go from 0 to infinite so this would simply indicate the size of the sphere the radius of the sphere theta which is the angle between this r vector and z axis you can see that i can define this when i bring this point anywhere in this direction the theta value will go from 0 when it is on the when this point is on the z axis or my, uh, pi or 180 degree when this is just in the minus z what about phi for a given value of r and theta i can see that i can make a 2 pi revolution around this z axis i can make a 2 pi revolution around z axis where the phi value will go from 0 to 2 pi and i can do this for each and every value of phi, uh, theta so for each and every value of theta when i make 2 pi revolution you can imagine that i will have i'll be getting a sphere so therefore phi goes from 0 to 2 pi theta goes from 0 to pi and r goes from 0 to infinite in this place you can see the the rules to convert from cartesian coordinate to uh, spherical coordinates and vice versa for example if i know if i know the x y and z value i can use this relation to get r theta and phi and if i know r theta and phi using this relation i can obtain their x y and z coordinates so therefore with using this relation we can go from one coordinate system to another coordinate system one very important thing that we must keep in mind is that what is the volume element so you remember in cartesian space we defined our volume element d tau as dx dy dz so that's that's an infinitesimally small volume el element with dx length dy length dz length in x y and z uh, directions respectively so this d tau volume element in cartesian coordinate converts to this particular form in spherical coordinates so this is not simply dx dy dz rather you see when i am talking about r i have r square dr when i am talking about the theta coordinate i have sin theta d theta and when i am talking about phi coordinate i simply have d phi we would actually try to integrate this volume element in the available space 
what we want to do is that we want to integrate this d tau from all uh, in the all space. So, I know that I have three different integrals to take care I have r square d r the second one is sin theta d theta third one is d phi r square d r suppose I am considering uh, a, a sphere of some radius let us say a of course, it can go to infinite, but I am talking about a uh, fixed value of uh, a. So, this is uh, this limit goes from 0 to a sin theta goes from 0 to pi. So, that means, for a given value of r I am taking this r vector from this z axis and bringing it all the way to minus z. So, this this is what it happens from 0 to pi and d phi is goes from 0 to 2 pi that means, for each value of theta I am making a precision around z axis such that phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. When I integrate this I have r cube by 3 in the range of 0 to a when I have this uh, integrate sin theta I have minus cosine theta in the limit of 0 to pi and when I integrate d phi I get phi going from 0 to 2 pi. So, when I apply use a I have a cube by 3 0 would give me uh, nothing. So, I am left with only this term when I look at minus cos uh, this minus cosine of theta minus uh, cosine of pi is minus 1 cosine of 0 is plus 1 and then I have this minus sign when I solve it I would get 2 and this quantity is, is 2 pi minus 0. So, I am left with 2 pi. When I look at this I see 4 pi a cube by 3 if you remember this would actually this is actually the volume of a sphere of radius a. So, when we integrate over all the three coordinates in the spherical coordinates we get this volume of the sphere and this is what this is why we call this system a spherical coordinate system. Now, we have defined a spherical coordinate uh, the uh, rules to convert from spherical coordinate system to Cartesian system and vice versa. We had in the previous lectures we had defined we obtained the expression for the angular momentum operator L x L y L z uh, in, in Cartesian system and today what we show here uh, is this is L x operator in Cartesian space, this is L y operator in Cartesian space and this is L z operator in I am sorry this these are L x, L y and L z operators in spher spherical coordinate system. So, you see L x, L y and L z they depend now on instead of x y z or x p x or y p y z p z we have the operators depend on some phi related terms some theta terms. So, there are some differentiation with respect to theta there are some differentiation with respect to phi this is for l x and l y and we see that l z depends only on phi coordinate and not on theta coordinate. Additionally, we can also see the other operators we had defined for example, L square operator has d square by uh, d theta square or d square by d phi square d by d theta. So, this is the form of the L square operator in spherical coordinate and these are the form of L plus and L minus operators in spherical coordinates. So, you see that L square depends both on theta and phi whereas, L z depends only on phi we will keep this in mind because in our next discussion we will use this argument. These are the definitions of the operators in spherical coordinates. Now, what we do is that since we have defined these uh, operators now we are we would be interested in obtaining the functional form of this eigenfunctions of angular momentum operator. The question is how do we get those functional form? We said we already know that eigenfunctions of angular momentum are space quantized 
that means there are finite number of eigenfunctions of angular momentum operator for a given value of l. So, if I have I have defined L the angular momentum of a particular system L is defined then I have 2 L plus 1 number of eigenfunctions which are which are psi L L to psi L minus L. So, for a given value of L I have psi L L till psi L minus L in the step of 1 where in the step of 1 where the second in index would increase or decrease by, by 1 unit. So, in this way I can construct 2 L plus 1 number of eigenfunctions where psi L L is the eigenfunction corresponding where L the m value has the largest possible value and that value is L. We also know that when I apply L plus operator on this function which is the uppermost eigenfunction of the angular momentum op uh, operator, then L plus operator's job is to take an eigenfunction from its level to the next level. But if I am applying L plus operator on the uppermost eigenfunction, therefore the result of that um, action should give me 0. So, in other words, when I take L plus and apply this operator on psi L L, I should get 0. Now, what is the functional form of L plus? L plus functional form is, is given here. So, I would now use this form. So, I am I will use this form. I will write h bar e to the power i phi t by d theta. So, these are partial derivative because now I am dealing with two different variables one is theta and another is phi i cot theta d by d phi. This is L plus operator and I am applying this on my uh, L L the uppermost Eigen function and I am getting uh, the right hand side as 0. Now, I have I would be uh, I would spend some time in solving this particular uh, equation. So, I see that uh, this these terms uh, can can be taken to the right hand side. So, therefore, I have I have to look at the action of this operator and this operator and this function. So, now before doing that let us see that the operator has two components on theta, one is on theta another is in phi. So, therefore, we would define my our wave function psi as dependent on theta part and phi part. What we would do is that we would assume that there exists a variable separation. So, I define that let my total wave function the Eigen function be multiplication of two functions one depends on theta another depends on the phi. And I am going to apply this uh, relation instead of writing psi which is a function of theta and phi I would uh, use it as s and uh, t where s depends on theta and t depends on phi. So, um, when I differentiate this function with respect to theta I see that I have s of theta and t of phi. So, t of phi will be independent of this differentiation because I am doing a partial differentiation with respect to theta. So, I am left with and when I do the differentiation with respect to phi the s function will come out So, instead of writing psi l l I just used this definition as s into t. So, then I what I would do is that I see there are some terms in uh, theta some terms in uh, phi. So, I would try to separate the two, the two uh, uh, parts. So, here I have d s of theta by d theta plus uh, s 
equals minus i cot theta s of theta d t of phi d phi and I bring this t phi from left hand side to right hand side. Now, I would uh, bring this theta related term to the left hand side. So, cot theta when it comes to the left hand side I have uh, tan theta 1 over s of theta equals minus i d t phi d phi 1 over t of phi. So, you see I can actually separate all the theta terms into one side and all the phi dependent terms on the other hand side, but there is something interesting here. I say that the left hand side has only theta terms, right hand side has only phi terms, but left hand side and right hand side are equal. So, since left hand side depends on one variable and right hand side depends on another variable and this left hand side and right hand side are equal. So, therefore, both left hand side and right hand side must be equal to a constant, because unless they are constant uh, we cannot satisfy this relation, because I will see that left hand side depends on one set of variable, right hand side depends on other set of variable and if they are equal that must that means, they both must be constant. We would use this uh, argument and try to uh, work on this problem. We would first take up the uh, theta problem, when I have So, therefore, I write here is, is a constant. So, since now in this equation I had the, the, uh, the terms which were depend on phi and theta, but since I am now only dealing with one variable at a time. So, I can re replace my partial derivative to, derivative to normal derivative. So, I took s theta uh, and tan theta to the other side becoming cot theta. So, I rewrite this and I different I, I integrate both the sides. You know, when I do that in the left hand side I have ln s of theta c when I differentiate cot theta d theta I would get ln uh, sin theta multiplied by this c, this c is the, the constant plus of course, I will have some constant of uh, integration. If I write down the value of c theta I would see that both, both side I am uh, taking care of the uh, natural logarithm and then I have sin to the power c theta and multiplied by some constant. So, I am instead of writing this equality, I am writing a proportionality, because there is some constant uh, constant of integration coming. So, I have some idea about this s of theta, which is rather simple as sin to the power c theta. Now, we have taken care of the left hand side term. Now, we would actually go to the right hand side term because right hand side has only phi uh, related terms. So, to do that uh, I start as the right hand side term had this term. So, the right hand side is also equal to to a constant c. Now, the task is in, uh, to solve this equation. So, in, again since I have I am dealing with only one variable that is uh, phi. So, therefore, I can replace this partial derivative to uh, regular derivative. So, I have d t phi or I can uh, take this minus i to the right hand side 
and bring this T, T of phi to the left hand side, I have. Now, I would integrate both the uh, both right hand side and left side left hand side. So, when I do this I have ln of T of phi equals I c phi. So, I am just integrating uh, d phi because i is imaginary root c is the constant. So, I have I am getting phi plus uh, the, that is the constant of integration. So, therefore, T of phi is proportional to E i c phi. So, again I am using this proportionality uh, proportionality relation instead of equality because there exists a, a, a another con constant. If you remember what we had c of theta as proportional to sin to the power c theta. So, we had defined psi l l theta phi as s of theta t of phi and now what we get is that some constant because each of them uh, uh, will have some constant term. So, I collected them and I am writing that constant n here sin to the power c theta e to the power i c phi. So, this is the functional form that I am getting for the angular momentum eigenfunction for a particular angular momentum eigenfunction and what is that when n takes the maximum value. So, this is the eigenfunction the max uppermost eigenfunction for a given value of l. But what we see here is we will realize that there is a sine function we realize that there is an exponential function. But what is and we also know theta and phi, but what is should be surprising is that what is this c we still do not know what is c we have not defined c rather we said that this c is constant. And how is this constant related to our problem to do that let us see what happens when I apply L z operator on this psi L L. We know that psi L L is an Eigen function of L z operator with an Eigen value of L h bar the functional form of L z operator is minus i h bar d by d phi. When I apply this functional form of L z operator on this form of psi L L that I just got you would see So, I see this is a differentiation partial differentiation with respect to phi alone. So, therefore, theta term and this n term will, will go out and when I do this I would have n sin to the power c theta minus i h bar and now I am differentiating e to the power i c phi with phi. So, I have i c and e to the power i c phi. I can rearrange that as n sin to the power c theta e to the power i c phi and I am left with this minus i plus i is 1. So, I am done with c h bar. So, you see in the left hand side I have this operator acting on this function which is an Eigen function. In the right hand side I have got back this function multiplied by this constant and this constant is nothing but the Eigen value. And here when I equal I make them equal. So, you can see c is equal to l. So, since c is equal to l I can now write, uh, write the general form of psi l l as n the constant psi to the sin to the power l theta e to the power i l phi. This is the general expression for psi l l. So, when l equals 0 psi 0 0 becomes n sin to the power 0 theta. So, this is 1 e to the power i l phi l is 0. So, this is 1. So, psi 0 0 is simply n. What is n? n is a constant. How do we do? How do we determine that? We have to normalize this. When n equal l equals 1 we have psi 1 1 as n the, the normalization constant sin to the power l theta l is 1. So, sin theta 
e to the power i l phi, so e to the power i phi. When l is 2, we have psi 2 2 as n sin square theta e to the power 2 i phi and so on so forth. So, for different values of l, we have obtained now the wave function, but one thing that is not, not known yet is the normalization constant n. In next lecture, we will start from this point and then we would see how we can normalize this state for eigenfunctions and what are the normalization constant. And another important thing is that we are still getting only l l. This is, this is the functional form of an eigenfunction of one of the 2 l plus 1 eigenfunction corresponding to angular momentum l. So, therefore, what about the rest of the angular momentum eigenfunctions? These are the some of these are some of the unanswered questions in this class and we will take them up in our next class. Thank you for your attention.